the Cubans were outraged. The people quickly took up Elian's cause, demanding that the boy be returned to his father, Juan Miguel. Millions of workers, students, housewives, and grandparents all over the country took part in demonstrations. Even Fidel. This issue united the country more than any other since the revolution. Juan Miguel and his immediate family traveled to Washington after the U.S. courts ruled in their favor. Fidel was there to see him off. It would take another three months to finally bring Elian back home. In the case of Fidel, we entered into his family with this suffering and he felt like one more of the family. He suffered with all of this. Imagine, he even told us that it had been one of the most emotional moments when we saw him here. In all, Elian had been away from Cuba for seven months. Fidel, a pesar de que sentía un gran deseo de conocerlo, de poder eh, ver a Elian. Eh, esperó hasta que el niño cursara su primer grado. Fidel le trajo de regalo un libro de la edad de oro y, y una caja de bombón. Que tú has terminado el primer grado. Muchas felicidades. Así que tú, no te vayas a comer esto y va a estar eso. <risa> Fidel le dijo a Elian, no te vayas a equivocar y te vayas a leer la caja de bombón y comerte el libro. Y ya con esto. Fidel Castro overthrew a dictator at the age of 32. Now, at 74, he is still a rebel, defiantly confronting the most powerful nation on earth, still making speeches that last for hours. Acknowledged as an important third world leader, he is still playing a key role in world affairs. Fidel Castro is not any longer a, a realistic character. He's a, he's a larger than life guy. He's the most vicious, evil person in the world to a handful of, of Cuban Americans uh, that are in Miami and who lobby the Congress. He's a monster who eats people and chews their heads off. And, uh, and then to other people, he's a savior. And to other people, he's just a very interesting and extremely clever uh, world leader and to somebody else he has huge historical value because as you say he's outlived nine American presidents and because he's he's been in contact with history in a way that almost nobody alive has been he really has been there done it seen it and moved it been a part of it pushed it in some way he is a redwood tree. He's an old-growth redwood tree. And all around him has been clear-cut, and he's still standing. And they're lusting to go in and make that final cut. And then we will have nobody, really. You know, we'll have, I mean, not like that. We'll have many other wonderful people, and we ourselves will be, you know, wh whoever and whatever we are. But um, he is an inspiration. Es que se recordará como uno de los grandes hombres de este siglo. Aún los que piensan que es por lo malo. Es decir, sea por lo bueno o sea por lo malo, sea por las dos cosas al mismo tiempo, Fidel no se olvidará en mucho tiempo. Pero al final la gente tendrá que reconocer que fuimos firmes, que defendimos nuestras convicciones, que defendimos nuestra independencia, que quisimos hacer justicia. Que defendimos nuestras independencias, que quisimos hacer justicia. 
que fuimos rebeldes. Y si a David se le recuerda, porque luchó contra Goliath, Goliath, a los cubanos, the Cubans, que constituyen un David mucho más pequeño, much David, contra un Goliath mucho más grande, se Goliath, le tendrá que recordar por lo menos tanto como se le recordó a David.